Well, welcome in the precious name of Jesus. My name is Robert Pears. Maybe someone's told you all about the secret place and you're wondering, what is it and what's it got to do with me? I want to share with you something powerful and wonderful and open up so that you truly understand what the secret place is and why you want to abide there. Why it's so important to press into the deep waters and meet with the Lord your God in the secret place of His presence. Join with me as I share insight from Smith Wigglesworth. And I'm going to really open up the Word and share a lot of scriptures in the hope that you will truly get a great understanding and a great desire to press in and meet the Lord God in the secret place of His presence. Father, I thank you for each person listening, and I pray this would be a word in season that ministers to them right where they're at. Life, Father, and blesses them. Holy Spirit, open our eyes to see, ears to hear, and show us, reveal Jesus to us. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray, and the church said amen. Now, when we look at the story of creation, we see that when God created the heavens and the earth, it became void, lacking. And in this place, it said that God said, let there be light. All of a sudden, when light came, it brought forth great vibrancy and depth. I was praying the other day, and the Lord shared with me how when you look at the shadows in those areas where it's dark, there's a lack of tone and depth of color. But when you step out into the light, all of a sudden you can see the wonders, the beauties, the tones, the vibrancies of color. And God wants you to come into the place where you step into the light of His presence, and there you discover true worth and value. That God wants to so reflect Himself in you and through you, to put His glory in a frail earthen vessel, so that the world might see Him. In this place, you become complete, nothing missing, nothing lacking. If you go to Numbers 6, verses 24 through 26, in this, it's of course the great blessing where Moses is told by the Lord, go tell Aaron, the high priest, and his children, uh, his sons, the priests, that when they meet the people, they're to declare this over them. Well, today we know that Jesus is the high priest of our confession, still declaring the same blessing over you. And it says, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance um, and give you peace. That word peace, nothing missing, nothing lacking. And that, of course, is the consequence of the thing when we come into His presence and His face does shine upon us. Because that's the place where we, that void, that lack that's in us is made whole and complete. In life, we so much seek for things to satisfy and bring us joy. We pursue this, we pursue that. All the time, every time we lay hold of something, It fails, and we live a life of frustration, disappointment, and discouragement. And as a consequence, we become um, bitter and disappointed. God wants to so press in and meet with you in the deep waters of His presence, and there make His face shine upon you that you might discover that you have great worth and value. When you come into the secret place, you begin to realize personally, one on one, the price that He paid for you. It becomes real. And in that, you discover how He sees you, that you are so precious, and that He wants to reflect and reveal different aspects of His glory through you. He wants to bless you. When God um, made Adam and Eve, the first thing He did was He blessed them and said, be fruitful and multiply. When He meets Abraham and calls Abraham, He declares to him, be blessed to be a blessing. And of course, calls them to be fruitful. God wants to bring you to a place where He blesses you to be a blessing and declares over you, be fruitful. In other words, you have great purpose, great value here on this earth at this time. That you are called, appointed, anointed for such a time as this. And that your value comes out of your encounter with Him, where He begins to give you eyes to see, ears to hear. And you see yourself not through the tainted lenses of this fallen world, not through the lenses of disappointment, discouragement, and everything that you've been told, but rather through the lenses of the one who so loved you that he paid a price, died, and redeemed you, and now wants to lift you and place you in heavenly places far above, and in that place, bless you with all spiritual blessings. Smith Wigglesworth said this, when God has put his hand upon you, 
Every way will open with benediction to others. The greatest thing that God has allowed us to come into is the plan of distributing His blessing to others. I will bless thee, and thou shalt be a blessing. What a thought that you were called at this point to lay a hold of Him and to be a blessing. You know, we've lost sight in Christianity of understanding the need that we need to get into His presence, seek His face, and lay hold of what He has so that we are distributors of that blessing. When I was trained in ministry, we were taught how to get into the Word, how to lay hold of great revelation and understanding, and then, of course, preach that uh, skillfully the next day. But we were never taught how it's so important to get into the secret place, go after the Lord, and hear, Father, what do you have and want for your people? so that it was a message of life, a message that came from the treasury of the Father's heart that God so desires to pour into the treasury of your heart. It's a heart-to-heart fellowship. That's what happens in the secret place. I look at David. David was a man that understood dwelling in the secret place of his presence. Before he would go to battle, he would seek the Lord and say, Lord, will you give me the victory? How many of us start the day seeking His face, crying out and saying, God, this day I give to you. And you meet with Him and there you receive the blessing for that day so that you are a blessing. We no longer live for ourselves, no longer live to acquire possessions, but rather we lay hold of to lay that greatest possession, which is Him, that we might distribute it, that we might pour it forth and reach and touch lives. That is true Christianity. Jesus came and, of course, He emptied Himself of Himself. He received the Holy Spirit that He might be a blessing, that He might distribute something, life, that He would make known that light of the Father. I love that when you enter that perfect light, you see something in perfect light. You see the true vibrancy, depth, the tones, and the beauty of something. And in the secret place of His presence, God brings you in and there in His perfect light to so reveal and make known to you that you might see your true worth, your true value, and then you might see others truly in the light of His presence. You see how God so loved the world. So often we are so moved and dictated to by how we see people naturally. We see them worthy of judgment. We see them mean and cruel. But in the secret place of His presence, all of a sudden, everything changes. And we see people of great value. We see people that it's worth laying down our lives, getting a hold of Him, so that we might receive something that we might give. Smith said this, When we know the power of God Almighty, we are never afraid of any weapon that is formed against us, believing that the Lord of hosts will rise up and stand against any enemy. The whole Secret Place series, of course, we built upon Psalm 91. And I encourage you to read it because it's the secret place of the Lord Most High. He is the one who's higher, greater, bigger, stronger. That is something we need to lay hold of. No matter what you face, no matter how big a trial or difficulty you face, in the secret place of His presence, you discover that one who's bigger, greater, the one who has the answers and how He wants to so give you a breakthrough. But it's always more than that. Because God wants to do something that's always increasing. The word blessing, which comes from the Hebrew word barak, has within it several things. First of all, it is to kneel. Because it's in that place where we come and kneel, surrender, lay down our lives. That place where we are changed and we have to be changed. Christianity is about a life transformed and changed by His hand, as you will see. In that place, then we receive a blessing. And that word blessing always has within it increase and joy because God wants to be the source of your joy. As I've said, so often in life we pursue this and we pursue that. We seek things to give us joy and satisfaction and they always fail. And as a consequence, we end up more discouraged, depressed, and disappointed. Our marriages, our finances, our everything is so tainted because we seek that to provide joy. We seek things. The true and only thing that can give you great joy is Him. And it's a joy that is a spiritual joy that goes and starts from the inside out and is not dictated to, controlled by, uh, or hindered by your circumstances. It is a joy that comes, that's eternal, right from the Father's heart into you. 
It comes as you begin to see things from a different perspective, a perspective where you're raised up and seated with Him in heavenly places, the place where you walk in true victory. I love this. When you look at Luke 24, now Luke wrote the book of Acts, and he talked about the ascension of Jesus. But in Luke 24, he gives a different perspective. He adds a little more depth of color to it. And in verses 50 through 51, Luke says, And he led them up as far as Bethany, and he lifted up his hands, and he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he imparted from them and was carried away into heaven. Now, the high priest would lift up his hand and do, of course, we know that from Star Trek, but it actually came from the blessing of the high priest. And then he would declare that benediction that I just shared with you. So you can see now how Jesus, as he's rising up, being ascended to heaven, he begins to bless them and declare, let the Lord, his face shine upon you and give you peace. Now, they were in the midst of a terrible, difficult time, but it says that they then left there filled with joy, worshiping. Because every encounter with the Lord where you receive that blessing, it should so change you that you walk away filled with joy, worshiping because you discover something that's greater, the Lord your God. You discover an answer, and you discover the place where everything you put your hand to prospers, a place where you're blessed in the country, blessed in the city, blessed no matter where you go, because it's from Him, of Him, and not of yourself. This change, this new life, is not you trying to make yourself better, but rather Him doing a work in you and through you as you simply kneel. The blessing comes not by your struggle or your uh, attempts or efforts, but rather the, the blessing comes as we kneel and simply receive. That place of pursuit and seeking by faith. Smith said this, God's power upon us, His wonderful benediction of us, His provident of promise written down for us to make us ready. And every day, under all circumstances, to know that he who promised will surely fulfill. We see that, of course, in the life of Abraham. That that blessing, that constant seal spoken over us, bring us always into that place where we are blessed. But it's also preparing us for that promise that God has given us. So that when we step into it, we have the character, the heart, and in it, we produce for His glory. See, God wants you to be successful. And he's a great father, a good leader. And he wants to take the time and invest it into you and pour into you so that he develops you, matures you. And he always has something greater for you. He always has something of great purpose and promise for you. In Mark 8, verses 8 and 9, we see the story of the seven loaves and the fishes. And look at this. They ate and were satisfied. And they picked up seven large baskets full that were left over the broken pieces. About 4,000 were there and... He sent them away and they were fed. But I want you to go back and read the story. And it said, He took them and He blessed it. So when He blessed it, it met the need of the people. And God wants to so meet with you in that secret place of His presence to bless you that you meet the need of the people. He wants to first meet your need and bring you to a place where you are fully satisfied, nothing missing, nothing lacking, filled with His perfect peace. Jesus said, My peace I give you not as the world gives, and it's a peace the world can't take. He said, be of good cheer, because I've overcome the world. And this place where you can abide in the secret place and all of the promises provided in Psalm 91 are yours. Read them. Lay a hold of them. They are yours as you abide, make a permanent residence. Not just visit, not just come, not just have a little experience, but rather make a decision. I talked about the word kneel. Because it's what you have to choose to do when no one's looking. See, the secret place, and this is where Christianity becomes real. It's what we do when no one's looking. See, we can put on the church face and we can look blessed. And many people, because they're very good at things, become successful and accumulate all these possessions. And therefore declare, this is proof that I am blessed. But the real believer is the one that's behind the scenes, seeking his face, kneeling crying out to God and letting their lives be changed and transformed when no one's looking because they desire Him. They see the value of Him. And with every encounter, they're changed. They taste and see that the Lord is good. And with every taste, they want more. They come to the well and they are satisfied, but they want more. They desire more. 
And God is so desiring to give more, and He wants to meet with you, and with every encounter, draw you closer and deeper, and pour more of Himself into you, that you might be changed and transformed. The Christian walk is not about you making yourself a better version of you. It's not you 2.0, but rather it's a life radically, totally changed by Him in the secret place of His presence. As you spend time in fellowship, kneeling, surrendering, and yielding, He, the Holy Spirit, begins to do such a wonderful work in you and through you. You become blessed to be a blessing. Smith said this, Why should you go away without blessing when God has promised you to have a measure that you cannot be measured? And God so desires to bring you. He wants to place a table before you in the presence of your enemies. He wants to bless you down so that you're blessed, shaken down, mixed. I mean, it's just a place of overflow. God doesn't seek to answer your prayers. He wants to over-answer because that's His heart and character. We've been taught and trained religiously how God is like. And God said, that's not me. And He calls you into the secret place to meet with Him and to know with Him. And there, open up the Word and show you His heart, His character. Throughout the Old Testament, He kept saying, my name. And that name, when you think about it, some trust in chariots, some trust in horses, but I will trust in the name. That name wasn't just Jesus or the Lord, of the, the Lord Most High. That name was his heart, the character that he was proven over time and that you could look at and see. We look at our name. Our name represents all that we are, our history, everything that we've done, our heart, our character, and where we're going. And that's the name of the Lord Most High. In the secret place, He wants to meet with you because that's where He's placed His name. And He wants to put His name on you so that now you become a manifesting witness of that name, a life utterly changed and transformed by Him. <clears throat> oh, this is true, Smith said. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. I know it. I feel it. It is moving me. It is chastening me. It is bringing me to a place where I know if you will listen, you will be blessed. The blessing of the Lord is upon you here, for the Lord, the Spirit speaketh to you. You know, I've said this, that so much of my life was about just getting into the Word and knowing the Word and sharing something that was skillfully developed, a powerful message. But I discovered it didn't have the true fullness of life that God had for His people. When you look at Peter, and Peter denying Christ three times. He meets with Jesus in John chapter 21. How does God take Peter and restore him and bring him back to the place where he become one of the great and powerful apostles? In John 21, 15, part B, he said, tend my sheep, tend my lambs. When we realize that they're his people and that we are meant to be a blessing but it starts by being blessed. So when we lay hold of and receive from Him, and I seek His face, my life is no longer about me. My life is no longer about me obtaining, because listen, I've come to an understanding as I spend time in His presence that He keeps me, that all my needs are met out of His riches and glory, and that I can trust Him and I have fellowship with Him, and I don't have to spend my whole time struggling trying to persuade him to meet my need. Trying to persuade him that he's got to help me. Doesn't he recognize I'm going under? But see, in the secret place, I start to see how much he truly does care, love for me. And I know. And so I can ask and know that I'm heard as I pray according to his promise. And now I go to a new level where I no longer live for myself, but for others. We see this, of course, in 1 John 3, 16, that Jesus, through the cross, laid down His life, and in that, made known, gave to us the revelation of the love of the Father. That love is what we experience and discover in the secret place of His presence. We are coming to encounter and begin to see and think His ways. The Father's thoughts are not yours. His ways are not your ways. And here's the place where you begin to know it and know His love. This is not the world's love. This is a radically, totally different type of love. This is a love where we see the Father, who didn't have to do anything, could have simply destroyed everything and rebuilt it. But He saw you and I as something of such precious value, a pearl, that He gave everything that He might know you. And He's doing everything that He might reach you. 
That's the love of the Father. That love needs to get in us so that we see people through that same love and we act and walk just like Jesus. We see in the book of Acts, as it starts, where Luke talks about the things that Jesus began to do and say. He continues to do through us, through those that dwell in the secret place of His presence. Because in this place, as we kneel, in this place, as we surrender, He is allowed to come and manifest through us. That is the greatest blessing. Listen to this. Smith saying the same thing. Without doubt, the greatest mystery of all time, from the commencement of creation to now, is Christ made manifest in human flesh. What can there be greater than eternal life working mightily through eternal death? What can be, there be greater than the nature, that which is formed with the vestige and appearance of Adam, being changed by a new nature, which has to be the fullness expression of the Father in heaven? Here in the secret place, God wants to so meet with you in this frail earthen vessel and change you, transform you, begin to bring forth in and through you Jesus. Not you trying to be a better person, but you be made a new person, a partaker of the divine nature, a supernatural person. Why? By the Holy Spirit being lifted, seated with Him in heavenly places, and changed. All those things that we've struggled with, all those things that we've tried to overcome, Each person may be different. Maybe it's anger. Maybe it's some addiction. And you've tried everything to overcome. Maybe it's depression. Your strength is simply not enough because the flesh can't overcome the flesh. But in the secret place of His presence, as you seek Him, as you cry out to Him, as you make the time and you invest the effort, when no one's looking, say, God, I'm for, I'm going after you. I want to meet with you. Knowing that God is and that He is the rewarder of those that diligently seek Him. Here in this encounter, God meets and over time changes you. Abraham, it was a journey. It didn't start overnight, but it started with each step. And as he pressed forward, moving towards the promise, God was changing and transforming him. You will find that God radically changes and transforms you day to day as he reveals in you and through you Christ. That word kneeling comes with it the consequence of laying down our flesh, the old. Because in the old, there's no good thing. You cannot take old wine skins and make them good. God wants to so change you to bring forth something that is totally, radically new. And in it, produce joy. Everything that you've been desiring, you will discover in that perfect place. This is the place of the dream, where we meet with Him and we are changed. In Galatians 5, 22 through 25, lay hold of this. We are called to walk in perfect patience. We're called to lay hold of what God has. But how? As part of the blessing, the Holy Spirit comes and invades, fills us, and there is an outflow. As you spend time in the secret place of His presence, in the Word, not just reading the Word, but as I've tried to explain throughout the whole series, allowing the Holy Spirit to open it and remind you of Jesus and make clear to you the Lordship of Jesus. As we receive that, eat of that, freshly, afresh daily, and allow it to become our spiritual food, it changes us. And the Holy Spirit now does something in us and through us. In Galatians 5, 22 through 25, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. Um, Now those who belong to Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also walk by the Spirit. This new life of being led by the Spirit, walking in the Spirit, we start to see manifested through us the fruit. And I believe it's one fruit because it's the aspects and glories of the Holy Spirit manifested in us. This patience is not me trying to be patient, but me simply allowing the Holy Spirit to make known that patience in me and through me. Everything that you're called to do in this new life is simply by surrendering and yielding and allowing God to do it through you. That's the message of the cross. That's what we see in the role model of Jesus. In the example, as he, we look to him, the author and the perfecter of our faith states and demonstrates. Smith said this, in much patience, 2 Corinthians 6.4, 6, 4, 
Um, there is a word which needs to be in us these days. I know I am speaking to people who have churches and who have a lot to do in churches. Remember this, you never lose so much as when you lose your peace. If the people see that you have lost your groundwork of peace, they know that you've got outside of the position of victory. You have to possess your soul in peace. And God wants you to so walk in life that you do possess your soul in peace. Because life is filled with trials and difficulties. And God wants you in all situations, in all circumstances, to be kept in peace, filled with His joy. I declare every day, this is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it because of, through, and for Him. My life is no longer dictated to, controlled by my circumstances. And maybe you've lived a life that you have good days based on your circumstances, based on your feelings, and you have bad days based on your circumstances or feelings, or your memories, or other things. So things control and dictate to you. That is not God's highest for you. Rather, in the secret place, the place of the exchange, as I kneel and surrender and yield, the Holy Spirit now comes in and puts into me such peace, such joy, such gentleness, such kindness. I am a changed, transformed person. I want people to see in me and through me that changed person. Not me making me better, but as they watch me over time, they begin to see the real Jesus in and through me. That is the fruit. That is the proof that I am a believer because I follow him and I love him. And as I love him, I keep his commandments and I keep his word and his word abides richly in me and it's changing me. It's transforming me. That's called abiding in the secret place of his presence. Smith said this, let your patience be so possessed that you can suffer anything for the church or for your friends, for your neighbors or anyone. Remember this, we build character in others as our character is built. Just as we are pure in thought, tender and gracious to other people, and possess our souls in patience, then the people have the great desire for our fellowship in the Holy Ghost. See, many of us, we live a life alone. But Jesus said that as long as the seed remains, it remains alone. But if it dies and falls into the ground, it comes forth. And that's what God wants to happen in the secret place, where the old in you dies and the new comes forth. All the old has brought you is misery and pain. And God wants to set you free because in the presence of the Lord, there is liberty. And he wants you to truly experience walking liberty. The place where he said he meets you in the word. And he begins to open it up and reveal to you greater vibrancy, greater depth, and you begin to see the promise. As you look at the story of Abraham, every time God met, God would bring forth the promise and with it a greater depth, a greater revelation and understanding of it. Because that's what happens every time you meet with the Lord. He takes you further. He takes you deeper. And He begins to expand because the word blessing has within it increase. God wants to you to come to that place where you are kept by the Holy Spirit, possessed in perfect peace, living to be a blessing, no longer living focused on you, no longer living, God, my rights, my hurts, my pains, but you have met the Lord your God in the secret place and you know that you are loved. And there, the issues of your heart are dealt with. You are finally free. You are finally healed and made whole to such a degree that now you can live a life where you are a blessing. You now live a life to pour out and bless others so that no matter what you go through, you refuse to allow the situations and circumstances to steal from you that blessing, that peace, that joy, because you want to bless others. Let me finish with this. Smith said this regarding Jesus. And remember, we are to fix our eyes on Jesus. And that's the one that you experience in the secret place. As you see him, the degree that you see him, is the degree that you become like him. Most people never really see him because they remain in the outer courts, beyond the veil. But the call is to come beyond the veil. But the price is the laying down of the flesh. No flesh can go beyond the veil because it must die. No flesh can boast in his presence. But in that secret place, as we die, as we lay down and lay off the old, we receive the new. And here we begin to truly see him. And as we do, we are changed into his image from glory to glory. And this, Smith said, now Jesus was the emblematic of that line. They saw him undisturbed. I love to think about him. He helps me so much because he is the very essence of help. They recognized 
as they looked at Jesus, no matter what he went through, he lived for others. He lived his life to help and to be a blessing right unto the end. I pray that each one of us will lay hold of in the secret place that we as believers are called to be a blessing. We are called to be a conduit of the glory and the presence and the life of Jesus. I pray that as you listen to this message, it has blessed you, encouraged, and strengthened you. I ask of you, check out the whole series, and may that series strengthen you, bring you different degrees and understandings as we slice it in so many different ways. And as you lay hold of that relationship that God desires with you through what Jesus did, not coming, not trying to earn it, not trying to feel guilty, not trying to somehow, God, I just want to feel like I've repented enough. No, rather coming, confessing your sin, allowing him to wash it, coming, throwing yourself on the cross and on the finished work that Jesus did and receiving by grace through faith what he has provided, entering in, not boasting in anything yourself, but honoring the blood of Jesus and there meeting with him and allowing him to change you allowing the Holy Spirit to be that great force in your life that produces in you the very image of Jesus. Amen. Well, if this message has blessed you, encouraged, and strengthened you, would you please like, share, and subscribe? And as you do, you help us reach other people. I want to see as many backsliders brought back into the place of a real encounter with Jesus. I want to so cry out and seek His face for a now word that I might be a blessing and raise up others to be a blessing as well. I thank you for watching. And I encourage you, if you would, consider joining prayerfully our prayer partnership team. It's easy. It costs you nothing. You simply go to robertparis.org and go to our partner page. As you do, you will receive our email newsletters and you get invited to our Zoom meetings where I spend time of sharing words and fellowshipping and ministering to the people. I thank you and I so bless you and want you to know that you are loved, you are precious, and that you are prayed for. Thank you for watching. Please check out more in this series and may they strengthen you and encourage you to live boldly for Jesus in these last days because Jesus is coming soon. Thank you. In the name of Jesus, amen.